part three. Action! <laughs> did you ever get scared of starting this? If so, what did you do to overcome the fear? Um, I did get a bit scared. Obviously, at school, nobody else is trying to look at problems the way you do or um, look at solving a world, a national problem. Wow. So obviously, you think that, okay, nobody else is doing it, but I'm doing it. But obviously, you're looking at what you can do to improve the world. So that drive that I had, obviously, it overcome, overcame the scared, how scared I was. Oh, wow. And like, obviously, sometimes like you think, oh, what do my friends think about me? But obviously, at the end of the day, you just go. It was, yeah, achieving the overall goal of the wow. project. Wow. So like, because you obviously were doing something much greater than yourself. Yes, that yes. drove you. Yes. <laughs> So it's more like intrinsic motivation. Yes. Woo! <laughs> Kiara's dropping some bombshells here for you guys. So what, and what is your take on failure? Because like you said, you failed. Like yes, yeah, yeah. You have to, obviously when you're looking at the, especially with science, if you're looking at the thing with the same mindset and the same perspective, it's difficult to come up with a solution that's different to what you already achieved. Mm -hmm. So I think, especially when you fail something, you have to look with, in a scientific uh, perspective. You have to look it from a different angle and see what else you can do, because obviously there's something you can implement and take out. So pain is more like feedback for you. Yes, yeah. And, okay, so now tell us, because I'm very excited, <laughs> especially not being in a scientific background, tell us like the detailed action steps that you took to take your idea uh, into, an, into a reality? So I think first of it was breaking down the idea into something that you can achieve, then researching it from different resources. I used internet a lot. Google. Um, yes, Google. <laughs> she has on Google just enough. <laughs> I used um, the internet a lot and just analyzing what previously was done in, the, in those areas scientifically wise. Um, looking at different scientists, what their research said, then breaking it down to how it can Im it Im impact your research, and then just experimenting, trying out different things, um, especially um, recording and controlling your different variables. Can you talk to me more about that, the experimenting part? So, um, I did quite a few experiments, obviously not all of them were successful, but as I carried on um, improving the products, improving the experimental groups, it eventually gave me something that would work and would be possible. Um, and from there I just started experimenting in different ways um, in terms of uh, formulas, in terms of actual plants, soil, just experimenting, recording, seeing the different trends. So could you give me an example of like how you did one experiment? Like, yeah. yeah. So one, one experiment I did was on soil moisture. Okay. So to see the different SAPs, obviously against your um, commercial SAPs, your control groups, like your acrylics, your pectins, your, your starch, and seeing how my experimental groups versed in soil moisture. So how, how did you do that exactly? So I, I did it all at home. Yeah. I, I obviously controlled different control variables, humidity, light, and I just tested them out with moisture meters. And I did that over a period of, or just a month almost. Every day? Every day, yeah. So mistakes are part of the process. Yes. What were some of the mistakes that you made on the way? I think not controlling different variables like humidity, light, obviously it affected the overall results. And I think um, just looking at research, uh, there was a lot of research available and obviously at first I didn't read all of them, just a few. And it's important to really use all your resources available because every research will uh, show something different that you, and it obviously affect your overall results. So would you say you'd rather spend more time planning before actually starting? So yes, especially with science, you have to look at all the research available, What, because that's what science is all about, what other people found out to improve what you have and you're doing now. So, oh. so I'm the genie from Aladdin and I'm allowing you to go back in time and start from scratch. What would you do differently? Well, obviously now I know what works, so I would just carry on with what works and then improve on it, which I'm doing now, improving on the final product. 
So how much time do you spend like to keep on improving the final product? Well, it's also difficult to say because you're constantly thinking about it, you're constantly improving upon it. So I think it's a, it's just a continuous journey every I, I do. Like this is what I always tell my friends. You spend a hundred percent of your time on the journey. Yes. You might as well enjoy it. Yes. <laughs> So Kiara, was this the Google Science Fair? Was it like your first project? Um, no, it wasn't. I had a lot of different other. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you look no, so surprised. surprised. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> no, it wasn't my first project. I had, well, obviously, I said I always have a curiosity and to question things. So I had various other projects, and obviously, I gave them to my dad, and then he said no this one wouldn't work this one would work from a more practical perspective so when did you start what age did you start with those projects um i had so many projects i would <laughs> it's fine <laughs> like one with animal poaching and light without electricity oh. it's difficult to put an age actually i'm not quite sure i think my mom would have to answer that one <laughs> <laughs> wow so like so i'd say let's say like you've got your Okay, I don't, I don't want to say 10,000 hours, but maybe like 100 to 10,000 hours before you actually like dove into like the Google Science Fair. Yes, it wasn't the first thing that I thought about, but obviously it was one of the main highlights. Definitely. Yeah. Sure. Okay, wow. So what are some of your best productivity hacks and what do you do to optimize your time when you're doing your experimentation? Um, I think planning before that's really important if you don't plan what you're going to do the time frames um, exactly what averages you're going to use it's obviously going to affect you throughout your project and obviously mine one my project took quite a long time monitoring different experiments so if you don't think of everything before you're going to have to start a game and if each experiment takes over a month you're going to waste time if you don't plan beforehand, see exactly what readings, what times, you're going to take everything. Cool. So, what are some of the opportunities that you like most excited about in the science field? I think improving upon different problems that Africa is facing, like poaching, um, light without electricity, and also furthering my scientific knowledge, uh, studying in um, universities, maybe overseas, places like that so if someone wanted to start something in the science sector what advice would you give to them just start that would be my advice you just start it off you don't have to even if it's at home with your resources that's available to you so important you just start and take results and carry on and i'm sure there wasn't that much of a cost but it was just oranges and yeah, yeah mine wasn't i also try to keep a very low cost experimentation because one of the main things i wanted to, to do was to be applied to farms all across the world so if it was expensive to test it out it means it wouldn't be able to be scaled so i try to keep everything low cost so actually being young and not having like a big budget and working with constraints actually helped you yes yeah ah, not bad guys i hope you'll listen to that so how 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 did you minimize your risk and like maximize your success in terms of the project um I think also it goes with the idea of planning. If you plan well, you minimize the the bad part of the project or you you minimize like errors that could occur and you just you maximize your accuracy when you plan properly and you have your control variables. So how how would you plan properly? I'm just looking at exactly what times you're gonna monitor stuff, what, um, how deep you're gonna monitor stuff, um, what things you're gonna keep controlled, are you gonna keep light, humidity, um, what different um, um, experimental groups, control groups you're using. All planning is essential, especially in science. So could you drop some value bombs that only a few people would know in your expertise? Um, are you talking about science expertise? Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I think the main thing is when you have a, 
uh, it does, something doesn't work, obviously looking at something in a different perspective and looking at what you're going to do and also taking a big problem and breaking it down into something that you can achieve. Hey Head Starter, I really hope you took something valuable from that episode. Check out my other episodes where I interview other successful and inspiring young people in the world. I'll see you next time. Unless you don't subscribe. Oh, subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs>